So every day more and more people are turning to electric transport for all their transportation needs. They may buy an electric car, use an electric bus, get something delivered by an electric van. You know, it, it's changing all the time and what we really need to be sure of is that the charging infrastructure that supports all those electric vehicles is at one time safe and secondly reliable. And that is where eSmart Networks comes in and I'm talking to Simon Gallagher from eSmart Networks, a UK based company that are basically in ensuring that what we don't see, the wires behind the scenes, are doing the job that we need them to do. So uh, tell me, Simon, I mean, that, what, what does that entail? Because it does sound like quite a big challenge at the moment. So yes, yeah, so we're eSmart Networks. We design and build electric vehicle charging infrastructure. So we find the capacity on the electricity networks. We design and build the actual electric vehicle charging hubs, so all the fast chargers and the cables, the earthworks and the concrete and the cement. We connect that to the high voltage electricity grid and we leave a nice beautiful electric vehicle charging installation for yeah. you and me and everyone else to stop by and rapidly charge their electric vehicles mm -hmm. so that's what we do basically so then presumably there's going to be growing competition for the the, ele the available electrical capacity i mean how does that affect your customers and the way you, you you're operating most people don't realize how much electricity demand some of these electric vehicle charging installations actually require so for example the electric vehicle charging forecourts that are absolutely fantastic been rolled out across the uk now they consume six megawatts of electricity right. now that is equivalent to about 5,000 houses so each one of those we construct we're basically adding the demand from a, a whole town, town. Really. Yeah. absolutely yeah. a small yeah. town yes yeah. so and the network wasn't really built for that so you know when we designed the network back in the 50s and the 60s towns didn't come along every week yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah so capacity is getting scarce um, so we spend a huge amount of time mapping out where the capacity is, identifying the capacity on the networks and then utilising that to connect these up at, at the lowest cost. Right. But then also, because this seems to be a thing that I'm seeing more and more often is, you know, you have all this you know, great row of rapid chargers, but then behind the fence, the other side is a, is a very big battery, like a container yes. that holds a battery. Yes. So is that becoming a kind of integral part of the, the system? Mostly what you're seeing behind the fences are substations, actually. Yeah. So, so the transformers, the transformers, the power from 33,000 volts or 11,000 volts to 400 that goes into the chargers. And what we can do is where capacity is a bit low, rather than spend millions of pounds of putting new cables in, we can put a big battery there and then the battery can boost the grid basically. So yes, there is quite a lot of that going on. That actually suits bus depots. We put a lot of batteries in bus depots right. because the, um, the buses aren't there during the day. Yeah. Um, so they, could, they need to charge overnight, so the battery can trickle charge during the day right. and then at night time it can charge the buses up, so it suits really good for buses. So then presumably also it kind of acts like a buffer, so you're not, when you plug all the buses in, you're not suddenly asking this enormous demand off the, off the grid, you've got, you've got a kind of buffer in between that. Exactly that, you're, so you would see a big spike of electricity usage, but with the battery you can charge that during the day and then that buffers it, yeah, right. so that overnight you don't see the same peak. Right, so what it might mean, like in the next 20 years, is it's not necessarily the national grid as we know it like the pylons that you see in the power stations and the big substations it's actually that we are going to be putting more wires in the ground effectively but it, it's got probably shorter distances from the supply to where it's really in, in demand yes yeah, so it was going to be a mixture so the the transmission system which is like the motorway of the electricity network is probably going to be fine because overnight we'll do most of our charge and so an overnight is when the less use is anyway. Yeah. Um, the, the crunch point is what we call a distribution network, the so lower voltage networks that run down the street. So we will need to do some reinforcement of those, but because we've got smart chargers, which is legislated for now, again, even people at home will do most of their charging overnight. Um, so the capacity we're looking for is for the bigger stations, the, the um, six megawatt stations, right. the 350 kilowatt chargers and, and things like that. That's where the, the capacity crunch is really. Yeah. I mean, I just, because when, when you say six megawatts for that, that would be if every single charger was in use, is that right? I mean, it, it, it's not like a constant demand for that. It, it's going to vary when people are charging and stopping to, to the, fill up. Yeah, so six megawatts is the overall capacity, right. and they've actually got some smart technology there that manages that so that it won't ever go over the six but megawatts. You, need, you yes. need to be sure you can supply that just in yes. case it is full and really busy. So exactly, yeah. the network has to be designed yeah. to, to provide that on a sustained basis, yeah. yes. So, I mean, I've seen a you know, really wide variety of different charging 
struck, you know, different charges mm -hmm. from different companies. I mean, is there? What do you specify for your customers, and, 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 and what? lies behind those decisions we're, we're agnostic when it comes to technology and um, we're pretty promiscuous of what we'll install really so you know we install ABB equipment Alpatronics and Tritium seem to be the the leaders when it comes to the 350 kilowatt the really high powered stuff and then for 50 kilowatt chargers we do wall box and Tritium so a real mixture but yeah we install everything generally we're amongst the first to install the new ones when they come to the UK so we get to play with them and see what works well and and then we can recommend to our customers what they should go with but we will install anything basically right. when you see in the news this charging station open or that one generally were the people behind the scenes doing the actual cables and infrastructure that that connect it all up together so you you will have used some of the chargers that we have installed yeah. for sure in the past yeah and uh, have you noticed that the the, the hardware that, that is being installed by your customer is improving when are those chargers getting better the things that we're putting in now they're really premium actually so you know they, they look like a, an iphone so you know they're much better engineered they're much more reliable they've got much better telemetry on them so the minute something goes wrong the company who runs them knows well, it's no, happened yeah, right. there must be huge demand I mean there's so many charges being put in you must be getting quite a lot of calls I'm guessing there's huge demand for our services especially around hubs which are um, five or six or up to eight 350 kilowatt chargers right. they seem to be the thing that everyone wants to put in which right. we tend to specialize in but yes there's a hundred in the company at the minute we need to grow that we need to double that right. um, as soon as we can so we've just opened a new office in Belfast right. which from my accent you can yeah. tell I'm very pleased about so you might come <laughs> from somewhere near that area yeah. absolutely <laughs> so we've, we've got a technical hub there for all right. of GB we're opening up another office in the Midlands in the near future but I would advise anyone listening any parents listening or anyone thinking about university now is an unbelievable time to do engineering so stem subjects are always good anyway but power systems engineering you have a good career ahead of yeah. you if you get into that no, you're not going to be sitting around twiddling your thumbs are you no, going to be very no. busy so so what other elements then can be built into the charging infrastructure that you you know the sort of underground the background supply because yes. there, there seems to be so many opportunities around car charging it's a very different it's not like filling a, a tank of petrol really it is a different technology isn't it so we, we typically see and do a, a three-way arrangement so we will install a hub that charges the cars obviously we will install a battery that can charge overnight and boost when needed and then renewable generation as well on site so some sites would put wind turbines on some are connected to pv in the roof of a big factory but we integrate all that together so you've basically got like a mini grid or a micro grid on that site that all interacts very cleverly to to make sure that the the electric vehicles are using renewable energy as much as possible which is what we all want obviously and then presumably if you've got a very big battery on site which backs up the the, the charges and it was you know the, a time of the evening when the charges aren't that much in use and you've got a lot of electricity stored there I mean do does it is anyone selling that back to the grid and presumably buying it cheap and selling it expensive so that's called arbitrage yes right. people buy it when it's cheap sell it when it's expensive um, but it, but it also supports the electricity grid in a very real way so whenever a power station has a problem and it and we call it trip so it comes off the network yeah. all of a sudden there's a there's missing generation and we have to match that in real time so what we would have done in the past was there was huge pumped hydro stations that were standing by ready to go or gas turbines spinning ready to pick up that load but what we can do now is those batteries can spring into life very fast and support the grid so they're, they're actually becoming a very critical part of the network and that's because because we have renewables on then if the wind dies down this can pick up and support so it, it's a very important part of the mix so if you could give advice to someone who or a company that is planning on installing uh, charging what you know what was the one sort of critical piece of advice that you would say to them the critical element is the electricity grid so what we find is that sometimes people can embark on a project for hundreds of sites across the UK and they don't consider the grid up front so whenever they do their financial modeling the grid cost is unknown and actually right. it's the biggest unknown and it's the biggest uncertainty so the sooner you lock that down the better and we can tell where the capacity is right. and really lock down those costs up front so the grid is the key so it might be worth so if you find a location like that and you get very excited it might be worth ringing eSmart networks just for a quick chat it's very <laughs> worth doing that because can, can you have seen, a look on your map 
can see. Exactly. <laughs> we see loads of examples where people find a really attractive site, but it's going to cost millions of pounds to actually electrify it. So yeah. we can tell you that long in advance, yes. Right. Give us a call. And so what, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you then? Google eSmart Networks or eSmartNetworks.co.uk. Right. There's loads of ways to contact us on there. That's, that's the best way, yeah. And I'm taking it at the moment you're fairly busy around the country. We are. We, we operate nationwide. We've just opened up in Ireland, right. in north and south. We operate Scotland, Wales, uh, um, England as well. Yeah. So yes, we operate nationwide and yes, there's lots of demand. So are there any kind of like extraordinary challenges that, you know, when you, you go to work in the morning, you're going, oh my God, another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of challenges, particularly with the, the bigger installations. So the equipment is quite a very specialized high voltage equipment. Typically at the minute, it's taken 25 weeks to get that right. equipment into the UK. Uh, it all needs planning permission usually. We need to get licenses off the local authority to dig up the roads to connect the cables. So there's quite a lot goes into it. So the earlier you can get started and think about it and, and get the grid locked down, the better. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Simon. That's re really fascinating insight into you know a side of charging electric vehicles that most people who drive electric cars never think of and critically important from now on you know that's great uh, that's all we've got time for you know do have a look uh, in the description under this video all the links are there to for e smart networks if you're thinking of a, a career in in power management and in, ele in electrical engineering really really good idea to, to to follow that up and have a look and see what you can be doing because you'll definitely be busy and have an amazing job uh, that's all we've got time for please do subscribe to the fully charged plus show tell your friends about it and as always if you have been thank you for watching